I'm William Baker coming to you from the Jane Sullivan Choral Library at the William Baker Choral Foundation Center in Roland Park, Kansas. I'm speaking today to invite you to hear the creation of Franz Josef Haydn by the 130 voice Summer Singers of Kansas City and Chamber Orchestra. There is one performance on Sunday, August 20th, 2 o'clock p.m. at the Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral, Broadway at 13th Street in Kansas City, Missouri. Tickets are available at the door or online at choralfoundation.org forward slash concerts. Our distinguished soloists are soprano Victoria Botero, tenor Zachary Devon, and bass Joshua Markley. I respect many masterworks. I admire many composers. I am inspired by many settings of sacred text. I adore the creation. Even from just an aesthetic standpoint, the work has everything. Thundering and thrilling choruses, rich orchestral textures, virtuoso passages for every wind and string instrument, solo arias that sweep and dance and are disarmingly beautiful. I will confess that I hold a greater fondness for composers that I like, either by personal acquaintance or by reputation. With composers in history, I tend to gravitate toward those whom I think I would have liked. Haydn is certainly one. He came into the world in poverty. In fact, he often said that childhood brought more floggings than food. By hard work and professional integrity and a commitment to the highest artistry, he became a man of considerable wealth and worldwide respect. Though well-mannered and refined, he never lorded his success above others. In fact, he was known to be quite generous and supportive of younger colleagues. Haydn was a man who loved the outdoors and who held a warm affection for nature. You can hear it in the music he gave us in the creation. The birds really soar. The created light explodes in power and beauty. The birthing world convulses. The host unnumbered sing to God with complete abandon and exultation. The story comes alive for the singer and the hearer more vividly than any technical wizardry or Hollywood movie magic could ever imagine. Franz Josef Haydn composed the creation during the years 1797 to 1798. He was inspired by performances of Handel's oratorios, particularly Messiah and Israel in Egypt. He heard those while presenting his London symphonies on visits to England between 1791 and 1795. Haydn, who lived from 1732 to 1809, was at the height of his compositional powers in his mid-sixties. The creation is considered by many to be his greatest achievement. With Messiah and Mendelssohn's Elijah, it is considered one of the three greatest oratorios ever composed. The libretto was cobbled together by Haydn's friend and impresario, Baron Gottfried von Sweeten, from the Book of Genesis, from John Milton's epic 1667 poem, Paradise Lost, and from an anonymous English poem entitled The Creation of the World. The latter had actually been offered to the elderly Handel 50 years before, but the old master elected not to set the poem, remarking to a colleague that it would have resulted in a four-hour work. The final libretto that Haydn used was first constructed in English, but was immediately translated into German. It was published simultaneously in both languages in 1800. Haydn strongly preferred the English version for English-speaking audiences. The original English version was known for some very clumsy phrases, but it remained largely unchanged for over 150 years. In the late 1950s, Robert Shaw created an entirely new English version that corrected many of those awkward phrases. I consider this setting that we will perform to be the definitive version of the work. The creation was premiered on April 30th, 1798, before a private audience of patrons and nobles. The first public performance was given at the Burgtheater at the Michaeler Platz in Vienna on March 19, 1799. It was sold out weeks in advance. More than 40 additional performances were given in Vienna during Haydn's lifetime, and the work was performed across Europe and in the United States while the composer was still living. Less than a year before he died, the frail composer was carried into the hall for a performance of the creation. At the first choral entrance, and there was light, 
the audience broke into wild applause. The composer weakly raised his hand and pointed a finger toward heaven to indicate that the praise and honor should be given to the Creator, not to himself. It was a gesture quite fitting for the way Haydn conducted his life. One of my favorite psalms is Psalm 148. It is a short psalm, but it takes the reader on quite a journey of the diversity and adventure of the idea of creation. The psalm is an invitation for all of the created world to join in thanksgiving and praise for the simple reality of being, finding and taking delight in being just what they were created to be, the light of the sun, the moon, the stars, the roar of the oceans, the creeping of insects, the kings and princes, the joy of young men, maidens, and children, the expanse of imagination, and the blessings beyond the scope of our imagination. I guess you could say that Psalm 148 is a Cliff Notes version of Haydn's creation setting of Genesis, Milton, and the creation of the world. Every human, from the beginning of time, has struggled with the question of identity and purpose. Who am I? Why am I here? What is in store for me? Tomorrow? In 10 years? In 10,000 years? The horrific experience of a worldwide pandemic, the clumsy and cruel responses to it by many authorities and institutions, and the revealed and lingering pathologies of substance abuse and broken relationships seems to have scarred the landscape of both the beautiful creation we have been entrusted with and the hearts and souls of many people. My daily encounter with the newspaper tells many stories of people trying to find themselves and answer those questions of who they are and where they're going. There is conflict that seems so petty and unnecessary. There is a lack of regard for the sacredness of life, theirs or others. There are vain attempts to try to find meaning, identity, and purpose in the silly act of clinging to breed boxes and color palettes. There never seems to be an end or a satisfying resolution in these things. The deeper and more preposterous the pursuit, the more elusive the target. A wise professional educator recently said in my hearing, the greatest crisis in education these days and in many of our institutions is not funding, it's not staffing, it's not one or another political philosophy. Rather, it is nihilism and narcissism, identifying ourselves only in the context of ourselves. This is one of the reasons I believe the arts are essential. They call us out of ourselves to consider ideas greater than our passing transitory experience. The arts call us to consider those ideas, truths if you will, in the context of the creating bonds that bind us together, not separating us by whatever present form of division might seem fashionable. Haydn's rendering of the story of creation confronts nihilism and narcissism with the story of an affectionate creator who fashioned all things out of nothing in an act of love in its purest form. The key thought to my mind is the intentionality of the act of creation. Every star hung with intent and purpose. Every rock, grain of sand, and drop of ocean water carefully and tenderly placed. Every spreading of every winged bird and every footfall of a ponderous beast placed by a loving hand. The image that inspires me the most profoundly is the idea that each one of us was sewn together in our mother's womb. Each person, and that means all persons, the intentional, individual, one at a time, creation of the one whose nature and whose name is love. If we can accept this idea, or if we can cling to it for a while with trembling fingers, how can we hate? How can we divide ourselves by the ridiculous list of identities, separations, divisions, and categories some try to assign to us? If we are the children of God's love, what can divide us? The concert you will hear on August 20th is urgently and desperately needed. In a world beset by confusion, fear, anger, division, and hate, the creation of Franz Josef Haydn calls us to raise our voices for hope, for truth,
for love and for joy. Please join us for Franz Josef Haydn's The Creation with the 130 voice Summer Singers of Kansas City and Chamber Orchestra, soprano Victoria Batero, tenor Zachary Devon, and bass Joshua Markley in the nave of the Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral, Broadway at 13th Streets in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. This Sunday, August 20th, 2 o'clock p.m. For tickets and information, visit choralfoundation.org forward slash concerts. Thank you.